I think uh, the present administration got it all wrong as far as the economic fundamentals are concerned. So, so basically to summarize the whole thing, yeah. uh, right at the inception of this administration, um, the first thing that they did was to give uh, tax cuts amounting to 600 to 800 billion rupees, which meant the state tax cuts, tax cuts right. the state lost Rev earnings, revenue amounting to roughly 2 to 3 percent of GDP. Um, so state earnings that was uh, around hovering around 11 to 12 percent right. came down to 9 right. and below 9. Right. When that happened, uh, the macroeconomic management went haywire. Right. You had the international rating organizations such as Standard & Poor, Fitch yeah. Yeah. and Moody's uh, lowering our rankings. Right. That uh, meant that Sri Lanka lost its opportunity to enter the international um, financial capital markets, right. the borrowing markets, um, which meant we couldn't raise dollar loans. Yeah. And all along, um, government, opposition, and uh, non political uh, factor. Uh, stakeholders all knew that we had a huge foreign debt to pay, $52 billion, uh, roughly speaking, 4 to 5, 4.5 to 5.5 .5 billion dollars. Was that the annually. leftover from the war in particular? Not really. Those were projects that were embarked upon which did not accrue an adequate return. There was inadequate, well, there was, I would say, negligible return on investment. So, um, we all, we knew all along that there were annual obligations of four to five billion US dollars, which we right. had to pay back in terms of capital and interest payments. Um, our inability to enter the international capital markets right. meant that we could raise the necessary loans. Subsequently, foreign reserves were utilized to pay off yeah, those loans, yeah, yeah. which meant the reserves dwindled and the valuable resources that were allocated for energy, food and medicine, yeah. uh, we did not have enough uh, dollars. Um, so uh, this is the vicious cycle. So yeah. since we don't have uh, adequate uh, energy generation, uh, we have uh, the manufacturing sector uh, not going at full capacity. We are unable to fulfill our um, export orders. We are losing our export destinations. And that is leading to a lowering of our dollar reserves. And we have had uh, issues related to tourism, especially because of COVID and yes, also now be so. because of the uh, Ukraine-Russia uh, conflict. Um, and uh, because of the maintenance of a fixed exchange rate system, uh, we had uh, foreign remittances dwindling because they used to use, um, how should I say this, uh, non-legal methodologies um, such as, uh, what do you call it, Hawala, Hawala and uh, Ungia, uh, those are the acronyms that are used uh, for those activities. So use illegal means of uh, transfers, transfers which which did not go through the uh, regular right. process. Right. Yeah, so basically that. speaking, uh, you know very well the basic uh, economic theories that have uh, prevailed in UK. The trickle-down economics yeah, well, really uh, economic. never worked. Uh, in the sense, you know, you you try to give uh, tax breaks to yeah. the top, yeah. and you expect uh, a filtering down of uh, disposable income, more disposable income, which would then generate economic growth. That never worked. Yeah. In fact, what happened was uh, it put us into a huge macroeconomic dilemma. Yeah. And right now we have youth unemployment, which is growing. Uh, we have inflation at roughly fourteen to fifteen percent. How much? Fourteen to fifteen percent. Is it? Yes. Right. That's a okay, yeah. uh, 
food inflation is 25 percent right? food food inflation right so um, the we have uh, multiple deficits uh, we have uh, budget balance of payments trade all three deficits are there and uh, we are having a huge crunch in foreign reserves so it's a it's a very precarious situation see lord needs be uh, if uh, one uh, considers uh, as case studies the recent uh, attempts by several governments who have gone to the IMF, countries such as uh, Uruguay, uh, Jamaica, Ukraine, except for Argentina, uh, these countries, and I believe. Uh, Chile or Peru, one of those two countries, they have gone to the IMF way before disaster struck. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose within eight to ten months of going to the IMF and embarking on structural reform, yeah, yeah. what they have managed to upgrade their rankings um, in the international financial uh, ranking institutions such as Moody's, uh, Standard & Poor, Fitch and so on yeah, and so yeah, forth. Yeah. And once again they have been able to go into the capital markets well, that's to obtain loans. Well, yeah, so that's uh, the so reason that, you uh, go. Isn't it? But of course uh, together with that I think most of those countries except Argentina have been very very disciplined yeah. in their restructuring program. So what we want here is uh, a multifaceted approach yeah. uh, going to international financial monetary institutions uh, is not the uh, sole instrument available uh, we have to use a variety of tools and policy instruments to ensure that Sri Lanka gets the best deal uh, the best deal in terms of uh, a, a financial bailout package uh, that um, has minimal impact on society, minimal impact on the people of the country. Because right now, we have mass scale uh, social and economic dislocation in our country. The whole country is primarily focusing on oh. the economy oh, yeah. uh, okay. rather than other extraneous issues. And uh, the people are unable to fend for themselves. Mothers are on the queues to get milk powder for their kids. There are gas queues. There are petrol, diesel, kerosene oil queues. There are power cuts. So daytime people are, are on queues. Nighttime they are in darkness. So you just have to understand the desperate situation. And basically there is no announced roadmap as to how the government is going to cope with this issue. There is no proper strategy, no proper vision. At least it is not proclaimed no, no. or announced to the people of the country that this would be our strategy and this would be um, our targets and so on and so forth. So I think the whole country is fully engaged uh, in the economic issue and I should also add because of the ill-timed, foolish, unscientific uh, decision to oh. ban uh, so chemical time. fertilizer, the yeah. ill-timed, yeah. ill-timed, foolish attempt right. uh, based back. more on myth rather than science right. to ban chemical fertilizer yeah. Yeah. has impacted detrimentally on the agricultural sector. Yeah, so Apparently, they say that there's going to be a huge reduction of yeah. uh, the, the yield. production yield. and yields. Yeah, yeah. And the chemical fertilizer ban has impact, impacted all types of cultivation yeah. paddy, vegetables, yeah, yeah. fruit, and you know what? The tea sector is very, very badly hit, and tea exports are also a major uh, right. foreign exchange earner for us. Uh, 
just the other day, I had a meeting of T small holders. Right. Um, by the way, of the total uh, production in our country, roughly 60 to 70 percent are provided by T small holders. You know, they have seen a huge reduction uh, in their yields. Tea factories are closing, they are going bankrupt, they are unable to pay their loans. And uh, uh, most are subjected to uh, a very desperate situation of selling off their assets, right. selling off their so called family silver uh, to pay up for their loans. And uh, they are in a very difficult situation. So, have you as a party put out a program that should happen? Of course. We, well, we are in the so process. We are, we are in the process of formulating it, right? Uh, because everything is in a state of flux; nothing is static. So, we know what we are doing in terms of basic principles, the basic approach. But uh, we are clear on the fundamentals. We are clear on what ought to be done at a macro level. But of course, uh, uh, we need to uh, watch the situation and uh, devise. Uh, the specifics according to the changing needs and changing challenges. And we have uh, uh, an economic troika, three uh, distinguished members of parliament, of which uh, Iran is one. And we have two others, uh, Dr. Harsha De Silva and Honorable Kabir Hashi. Um, they are devising the, what you may call an exit strategy and exit from this debacle.